In the meantime, we continue. So, let's see. We did, last we met, we did solubility product, KSP, with what's called the common ion. The common ion effect is when you add an ion that's already in, already part of the composition of the chemical you're interested in. In this case, hydroxide is in the composition of iron hydroxide. And you have a solution that already had hydroxide in it, so that ion is in common. Solubility tends to go down. Molar solubility. In this question, and in everyone you've seen so far in this presentation, you were given the KSP. Where did we say you must find them when you were doing mastering chemistry? In der book, that's right. However, should you be at school doing your work or anywhere else doing your work and you don't have the book, you may come to iLearn. And in this ever-growing list of resources here at the top of the 111 iLearn page, there's the Tro book Equilibria and Potentials. Let's see if it will load. Here's a list of KAs. Here's a list of other KAs. Here's some more KBs. KBs. KSPs. You don't need to write any of this down or anything. Just know that should you be doing your homework and not have the book right with you, or frankly, if you don't have the book, because I know some people don't have the book, this is probably where you want to go to get your classes for the homework. Yep. Mm hmm. Now, we had some good questions in the acid base chapter about the language of how we ask the question about what's an acid, what's a base. Well, when you have HA and A minus, you can tell the difference by which one has more H. That's HA, it's behaving as an acid. But when we did the multiple equilibria, H3PO4, you can pull each one of those protons off one at a time. And some of those intermediate complexes could be an acid or a base. I think that's cool. It has a word that I also think is cool to describe it. It's amphoteric. That's the word in bold at the upper left. These are materials that can act as acids or bases depending on the environment you give them. Aluminum hydroxide, which coats any aluminum surface in air that you find, I guess it's aluminum oxide, uh, is one such material. This can act as an acid or a base. What is it doing? What is ALO3 or ALOH3? How is it behaving in the first equilibrium that's written? As an acid or as a base? Somebody said, well, what's it reacting with? Reacting with an acid, so it is acting as a base. Good. Listen. And that changes from ALOH3, which is a solid, into an aqueous species. I guess H2O would be liquid, not aqueous, but you get the idea. So when it acts as a base, it dissolves. Second equilibrium. Acid-base chemistry is nice, because once you have one, you have the other. First one is acting as a base, so in the second equilibrium, aluminum hydroxide is acting as an acid. Same material, so it's still solid. But if you treat it with hydroxide instead, if you react it with a base and force it to act as an acid, it also dissolves. Yep. So is water amphoteric? 
Yep. Because water can act as an acid or as a base. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it is usually used to describe solids groups, and I don't know if that's just sort of circumstance, happenstance, or if that is actually meaningful or not. But yeah, I would describe water as sample material because it could be an actual mass of water. Yeah. Nice. When you get to be a chemistry professor, like me, and then you're not ashamed of being a nerd anymore, you too might have a favorite type of diagram. <laughs> Nervous laughter. This is my favorite type of diagram. It's named after Marcel Pourbet. Well, I think it was Belgian, if I have it right. On this graph, this graph combines acid base chemistry, which we already did, solubility, which we're doing now, and electrochemistry, which we'll do in two chapters, into one graph. That's why I like it. It's almost half of Chem 111, one plot. I think it's awesome. What I actually like about it, though, is because it tells you what will happen. Predictably, what will happen in almost any material under almost any conditions in one graph. These are not technically within the scope of Chem 111. Sometimes they show up as extra credit questions, like a point or two, because it asks you to dig through pH and solubility at the same time, or something like that. It asks you to use things we've already done, but in a new graphical way. We won't go into them in too much detail, but I think they're pretty sweet. They're full of amphoteric materials. Didn't we already show one with a giant fist? I have a giant fist. It's actually a koozie, like to hold a can that a friend gave to me. But you, you know, it has like it has a bar inside that you hold and then there's a fist around your fist. Um, Sasha loves it because you can like give people a pound with it or whatever. And I brought it at the beginning of the year, I brought it to faculty meetings so that in your like fourth hour of faculty meetings, you just put it on the table and make a point. It went pretty well. It went pretty well. It went pretty well. Let's practice. What is the calculated molar solubility of iron 2 hydroxide KSP of 4.87 times 10 to the minus 17th? At pH 3.0, X is not small. Wait, what? pH 7, X is not small. Wait, what? And pH 13. Let's start. Let's do that one first. It's actually pretty similar to the example we did earlier. So copy down the info there, and then I'll go make some space, and we'll do at least two rounds. Calculated molar solubility. Calculated molar solubility.
17. First thing we always do. Equation. Yep, thank you. Balance equation. Why? Because it sets us up to know what products over reactants equals. It's generally nice to know your balance equation because it can help with things like stoichiometry, but why do it when we have an equilibrium problem? Because then you know explicitly what is in products and what is in reactants for K. Thank you. And then, then it's time to get icy. Ice, ice table, that's right. Has everyone she seen the Ed Sheeran molecular shape of you remix thing that's going around? I'll send that out. It's, it's really well done. I, would be, couldn't be happier than if I never heard that song again, but it's a really, really well done rewrite of that song for like the Chem 1 molecular shape of Esper theory type stuff. And it just goes on and it's like seven minutes of molecular, it's crazy. Someone should redo Ice Ice Baby for Ice Ice Table. <laughs> that, is, that is a challenge. That, if you do it and you do a good job and it gets, if it goes viral, I'll give you extra credit. <laughs> Sure. How much extra credit? Aha. I don't know. We'll make it worth your while. If it, it depends on how viral. What if we just make it and it's just really, really good? If you make it and it's really good, I don't know. We'll have to take this stepwise. Everyone, I'm going to have to go to my dean and be like, well, everyone... Everyone did really badly on exam two because they were all making this ice ice table video I told them to make. <laughs> so it's kind of my fault. But they really know how to, how to <laughs> they really know how to teach one thing. Oh man. You guys. You guys. I like this group. I like this group a lot. What do I put in my ice table? Well, let's see what I have initially. I like to start with initial unless I'm told an equilibrium concentration. So initially, how much iron is in water at pH 13? I mean, none if you're not told. But how much OH minus is in water at pH 13? Yeah, you gotta calculate it. pH 13 means pOH is 1. Which means OH minus is 10 to the negative that. Which is. Yeah. Oops. Trying to dissolve a material so the concentrations will increase. I use the coefficients from what was reminded that to me that I should balance the equation, which is good. Yeah. Sure. Why does OH minus have an initial concentration? Why does OH minus have an initial concentration? Why questions are the hardest in chemistry? Um, there are sort of two answers. One is that the information was given to you, 
in the form of pH. The second answer, the better chemical answer, is that OH minus is always present in water to some degree. And that's why I actually don't like when they say in pure DI water and we use zero for OH minus. That's technically not correct. So I have a, it works. It's functional, but it's it's always there. H, H3O plus and OH minus are always there. So to be more correct, we should always calculate it. Is that helpful or is that just rambling? Okay, good. It is ramb I know it is rambling, but hopefully it is also helpful. Is X small? Yeah. Why is X small here? Because what? Because one, functionally, I didn't tell you it was not small. That's true. The equilibrium constant is small, which means I will not have a whole lot of products. That means not that much iron will be involved, which means X should be small. So then why isn't this true for the other peaches? We'll deal with that when we get there. You'll see. What matters is the x in comparison with the number you're starting with, right? So what matters is how small x is in comparison with 0.1. If, if this were a much smaller number, then it might not, x might not be small enough. But that's what you get in the other cases. I like these, they're easy, like from a calculator standpoint. Divided by that should increase it, right? Yep. I look back, X was the molar solubility of the compound. 4.87 times 10 minus 16th molar, and I did something wrong. What's up? Uh, yep, thank you. My tragic flaw, forgetting exponents. 4.87e minus 17 divided by 0 0.1 squared equals. Better. Thank you. Better. Yeah, I see. Oh, should it be? Yeah, how many sig figs? Good call. Yeah, I think I would lose a point here. I mean, I would, clearly I would have gotten it wrong in the first place, but yeah, it should be one sig fig. Good. Yeah, right. Really. Molar solubility. Molar solubility is. Start out with the nonsense answer. Is it a quantification of solubility with units of molar? Okay, that's not helpful because it's in the word. But with that, like a moles of what? Moles of the compound as you are given the formula. So you have been given FeOH2. How many moles of that will dissolve in water at pH 13? Like per liter of water, that many moles per liter of that formula. Typically, X will be the molar solubility because that's the, like, there's a comp, there's a the subscript of one. Can have it where that's not the case in this first. Less What does this tell me? This tells me that rust is not soluble in basic water. Okay, kind of makes sense. This is why you can put Drano down your pipe. Drano is base, and it doesn't eat the pipes. It eats the organics, like the hair in my drain, but it doesn't eat the pipe, which is good. Acid might also eat the hair, but it would also eat the pipe. That would be bad. Let's do that case. What was the pH? Three? Yeah, let's do pH three. Ah. 
So similar setup, same equation, same KSP, same everything, except I'll have a different concentration of hydroxide. pH 3 means pOH of 11, that's right, which means OH minus equals 10 to the minus 11th molar, or 1 times 10 to the minus 11th molar. Come on. And I can distribute the x. Oh, I didn't square it, right? I forgot it again, man. Square. But at least I caught it sooner this time. You know what? I don't even really want to deal with that. But I do want to know the answer. What am I going to do? I actually don't know if Google will solve this or not. It might. I haven't tried it. I guess we could try it. Four point eight seven E negative seventeen equals X E negative eleventh plus two X squared. Yeah. No. Okay. Maybe. Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram is actually the reason that tungsten is a W. The, the ore was called Wolframite. I always wondered why tungsten was W. Some of the other ones I know, tungsten I never knew this. So, come all the way down to the modern era of computer science. They call this a computational knowledge engine. What that means, I have no idea. What I do know is that you can type in an equation like that and it will solve it for x using the quadratic formula, a Taylor series expansion, any number of things that I am too lazy to learn. 4.87 e negative 17 equals x times 1 e negative 1. So you need to look and make sure that it interprets what I typed or what you typed correctly, and that looks right. Um, you need to be especially careful if you use this with logs because it will throw you back and forth between base 10 and E without telling you what it's doing. But I want the number. Scroll down, real solution, 2.3 times 10 to the minus 6.
Did you? But that also be one sig fig, yeah. But this time I got full credit because I got it within one of the sig figs. But yeah, you're right. Now, I would love to give you Excel on an exam. I would love to give you Wolfram Alpha on an exam. I would love to give you all this stuff. I can't do it. So I'm going to make X small. This is useful in the real world, and is it? are there times when it is useful to know how to do the quadratic formula? Sure, but you can relearn it from Wikipedia at any given time. Is it useful to know how to do a Taylor series? Maybe. I haven't encountered it yet. But if you need it, you will learn it. Here we don't need it, so here we won't learn it. I want to do one more from this list. At least. Let's do this middle one. What is KSP for 1.5 molar Na2, K2, FeCN6? Or sodium, potassium, and a molecule called ferrocyanide, that means you can say cyanides. Or minus, or the ions. I think everyone you've been given so far, you've been given the KSP and asked for molar solubility. This is backwards. I'm going to start it the same way though. I'm going to say, well, KSP, molar solubility, I'm somewhere in the domain of solubility, but I don't know exactly what to do yet. So let me start where I always start, write the balance equation. Since it's a KSP, that will be the equilibrium constant for the solid dissolving as its ions. Try to balance it this time. What is the KSP? I don't know, that's what I was asked for. But that equals sodium squared, potassium squared, times that ion. So if I knew those concentrations, if I knew the concentrations of each ion, I would put them together, square them as needed, multiply, and get KSP and be done. But I do have one more piece of information. It's one point five molar. One point five molar in what? Yeah, whichever chemical has the coefficient of one. That's right. So some people see this directly. Some people like to do this with an ice table. Either way is fine. They all start with zero, they all go up by the coefficients in the equation above. So 2x, 2x, and x. And then I get 
Well, I mean, I could follow it down and put 2x, 2x, and then x in the bottom, but that wouldn't help me because then I would have an equation with lots of lots of variables, well, two variables smashed together in multiple ways. But I know that one of those will be 1.5 molar. Which one? Yeah, perfect. FeCN6 will be 1.5 molar. So how much potassium do I have? Yep. And how much sodium? Also three. Now, take these, plug them in, and calculate away. How many sig figs should I have? Two, I guess. So what do you say for vanilla ice table? It doesn't. I don't know. You guys got. You have work to do. I'm not. I'm not doing this. <laughs> I got other silly things to work on. Find ion concentrations. Calculate KSP. Take the points. Move on. Did I answer the question? Yep. Because I was asked for KSP. Did I have the right take things? I think I got it. I missed it at first, but I think I got it. Do I have the right units? No units for KSP. No units for any equilibrium constant. So good. good, 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 good. The book only gives you KSPs that are small numbers, that are 10 to the minus something. I think that's limited. There's plenty of materials that are soluble to more than 10 to the minus 17th molar in water. I think we should do some of them. So I put some of those in the worksheets and the exams and stuff. The mechanisms are exactly the same, so don't freak out when you see a large number instead of a small number. Okay. Yeah. Questions, thoughts? All right. We continue. Wherever there's a K, there's a Q. There's probably some good phrase for that. K is equilibrium constant. Within the solubility framework, that is like the point, those are the concentrations where precipitation just starts. Whereas Q is products of reactants wherever you are. Whatever concentration you find, that's your Q. Bunch of words on this slide, but these ones matter. Q is products of reactants, which here is just products. You multiply the products. And if you compare Q and K, which is typically what you do with Q and K, if the concentrations are high enough so that Q is greater than KSP, the dissolved material will precipitate. So what? So Q equals K, because then you're at equilibrium. You're unlikely to shift. If Q is less than K, if you find the concentrations and multiply them together according to the products of reactants, and you find that Q is less than K, you could still add more. You don't yet have enough ions in solution to cause a precipitate.
replace the lamp. So what are these going to look like? You're going to get some concentrations, calculate Q, and ask yourself if it's bigger than K. Terminology. Same idea, same concepts, but terminology. If Q is less than K, that is a situation where you could add more. Don't yet have enough products to be at equilibrium. The solution is under saturation, and no precipitate is expected. That's typically what the phrase, like how the question might be phrased. Is please describe the solution as under saturated, saturated, or super saturated. You have to do the math. If Q equals K, well, you're at equilibrium, and the solution is what is called saturated. Your solution has had it up to here with whatever chemical you're trying to dissolve into, and, and no more. Saturated. If Q is greater than K, it's what's called super saturated. It sounds cooler than it probably is. That means that if you wait, you expect that a precipitate will form. There are too many ions in solution for equilibrium. <coughs> and how much will precipitate? Well, enough such that Q will equal K. Questions? Thoughts? Keywords. Undersaturated, saturated, super saturated. And the key behaviors are no precipitate, equilibrium, I guess, and precipitation expected. Practice problem. Seawater. Mostly sodium chloride. Lots of other trace metals, though, and other non metals. Got more on it. It's got a decent amount of fluoride in seawater, which I only recently learned. 0 0.059 molar in Mg2. Magnesium hydroxide has a KSP. Uh, 0.011 molar in calcium 2 plus, and that has a KSP. Two part question What is the minimum concentration of hydroxide that will trigger the precipitation 
of magnesium. And then part B asks about calcium. seems to only be concerned about hydroxide and magnesium. So which KSP will I use? The one that has magnesium in it. Start as we always do. to go from here to an ice table because one, I like to think about vanilla ice, and two, we do that so often, but let's see if we can do this without. Because if you have enough information to plug it in, let's do that. We have a concentration of Mg2+. plus. That would leave me an equation with one variable. Is it the, is it the one that I want? Yeah. Then let's do that. So I see magnesium. I'm going to plug it in. And I could solve for OH minus. Let's see, 2.06 times 7 minus 13 divided by concentration Glad I remember to keep the square there because now I remember to square root it. Or raise both sides to the half if you prefer. How many sig figs should I have? Two. One point nine times ten to the minus six molar when magnesium, or more properly magnesium hydroxide, starts to precipitate. Why add that clause? Just solve for that number. Put another way, how do I know that that is true? How do I know that that's the concentration where magnesium precipitates? Equilibrium. It is. It is, because it went necessity, because I solved it that way. 
if you are at the conditions where the equilibrium constant equation is true, that is the point where that chemical will start to precipitate. Okay. What was the terminology that told us that 0.059 molar magnesium was not equilibrium in that condition? So Kayla's question was, how did I know that 0.059 molar magnesium was also equilibrium? So it's clear that that's initial, because that's what starts in C1. How do I know that that's also an equilibrium? I would say that as phrased, question A, in my mind, I have adding hydroxide. Starting from you know, zero hydroxide, I'm increasing hydroxide until KSP is true, and I'm not changing my DC. I think is how I would phrase that. The other way is that before, when I had to use an ice table, you were asked how much will dissolve. And that would be I add a solid, and I want the concentration to increase as it dissolves. Here, the magnesium is already in the seawater, and there's no, at least in terms of the question, solid magnesium hydroxide that could dissolve in the other way I think of it. Good question. Making me think over here. Making me work for it. Other questions or thoughts about part A? What about B? How will I answer part B? What will the form of my answer be? Molarity, but of what chemical? Of Mg2+. So I need a concentration of Mg2+, to answer this question. <clears throat> I only have one equation I can use that will have that in it. And it is the KSP for MgOH2. However, let's look at that equation, the KSP for MgOH2. If I want to solve this for magnesium, which I must, I'm going to need to know hydroxide already. Because I can't have two variables. Let's look at the rest of the question. Remember, KSP, the K, is when that chemical starts to precipitate. So, which KSP do I start with to find the hydroxide? Calcium. This. Use the equation where you are told those are the conditions. When calcium starts to precipitate means use the calcium KSP to calculate basically your conditions, to calculate any other concentrations. Take those other concentrations and plug them into the equation for the chemical you're asking about.
Can you see? Go back up for a second. Yeah, I'm going to go back. So I'm going to let people copy this, and then we'll go back up and we'll try it for sure. Yeah. But well, you don't have it memorized? Yes, definitely. All right, try part B here. Give it a shot. Use the equation for calcium to calculate hydroxide, and then take that hydroxide, plug it into the other equation to calculate magnesium.
What was the KSP for the calcium one? I don't have it. Together. And calcium was 0 0.011? Divide both sides by 0 0.011, take the square root. Cool. That's a good start. That's the that's sort of I think about that as like those are the conditions that we're at. That's the hydroxide concentration where calcium begins to precipitate. Now, I wasn't asked about calcium, I was asked about magnesium. And that KSP was 2.06 times 10 minus 3. So this is all calcium. Now magnesium. I just had it and lost it. What was it? 2.0? No. Is it? Wow. That's a coincidence. Key step, take your conditions, plug it into the equation that has the chemical you want. If, the, if your equation does not have a chemical you want in it, you are gonna be very challenged to solve for it. It's not that much magnesium. Did I answer the question? Yep, because I got magnesium. And I did it at the calcium conditions. Sig figs, I think it was two, and units are molar. Some, Jamaica had a good question about the units. I'm a huge advocate of you keeping the units in your question and using it to solve for the units. Unfortunately, it doesn't work here. When equilibrium constants are such that we just throw out the units, then you can't use it to solve for it. So you have to sort of fudge it and say, oh, well, I know I was asked for the concentration in molar. I know that's what we do for equilibrium constants. That's why we'll make the units unsatisfying. That's what we have to do. Other thoughts, other questions? Yeah. 
When we grade, do we give a range? So that is, if you cut the OH minus to two sig figs, which you would be perfectly within reason to do, do you then, you will end up with a different number here. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Um, where that really shows up, so this, it, it'll change from that whole So what do you get? 4.7 times 10 to the minus 10. And when it's times 10 to the minus 10, it's real small, and that's a small difference. Where we see a big difference in that is in problems where you have logs. There's a small change, and then you raise it to the 10 of the back, that's where it shows up big. So you have to be a little bit careful of the greater end. But short answer is, yeah, don't worry about it. We, we got you. I mean, here's another one. They tend to be two-part questions. I guess you could skip right to the second part, but you vote yes. What? Skip to the second part, or skip the question in its entirety? <laughs> I know Anthony. Anthony's, Anthony's swiping for me. All right, so here's another practice problem. I'm happy to make a key and put it up for this if you want to practice this and check how you do. There's also a solubility worksheet in the discussion section. We've been plenty of time to practice these. Um. One way you can change the solubility of an ion is by adding other ions. They form what is called a complex, and therefore this is called complex ion equilibrium. It's not that it is complex, but it forms a complex. And then it gets wordy and really Silver chloride has this KSP. You don't have to copy all this down, but we'll do this sort of by eye, and you can get it all later if you want. Silver chloride, very soluble or not so soluble based on this KSP? Not so soluble. Not so soluble, good. The rule of thumb you will develop is that if the KSP is small, not so soluble. But I have a second equation here. Silver ions, silver plus, plus ammonia, two of them. I think I fixed the typo here, did I get it? Yeah. Makes silver with two ammonias and the same charge. So basically two ammonias are stuck to the silver ion. This reaction has an equilibrium constant, but the subscript is F for formation but it's an equilibrium, it's products of the reactants. Of favors products or doesn't favor products? Favors products. If I were to, let's say, add these two equilibria, in fact, let me just do that. I don't know why I have bullet points on there. Silver plus will cancel. Anything else cancel? No. In general, I added two reactions. What do I do to the equilibrium constants? Hey man, that was on the first exam. I don't want to do that anymore. Well, you have to. Yeah, you multiply. Perfect. Add reactions, multiply equilibrium constants. It's a pretty terrible letter K. be the end of class, my handwriting has lost it. 1.77 E minus 10 times 1.7 E7. Three. 3.0 times 10 to the minus 3. That's what I get when I combine these two reactions. Now, it's still a small number, it's smaller than 1, but it's a lot less small than it used to be. 10 to the minus 10th. Why does that matter? Yeah, it favors products more than it used to. Right. Still favors reactants, but less so. That's important. 
because it, it is less, favor, less favoring of the silver chloride solid, which means you dissolve more. This is probably the oldest trick in the chemist's book of how do I get a substance that doesn't want to dissolve to dissolve, couple it with another equilibrium that increases the overall equilibrium concept. This is how biology gets a lot of work done as well, including solubility. Next time we will start with this practice and then we'll dive into thermodynamics. Slides for that are uploaded now. Have a good one. See you soon. Hello, if this is an appropriate time or if I should come to your office hours. No, it's fine. Just give me a second. Alright, yeah, sure, sure.